Hi everybody, welcome back to Reissued. This week we are doing something different. I was in the middle of working on a project that I was planning to put out this week that I think will go out next week. It's behind me. It's a leather jumpsuit. It's going really well, but it occurred to me that if I wanted to upload when I usually upload, that that was not gonna happen this week, that it needs a little bit more time and love and care. So I thought rather than getting stressed out and trying to force that video out before it's ready, that I would sit down and light a candle and do some painting and take you guys with me. So, um, three, two, one, go. So I'm not really set up for this type of overhead shot usually, but uh, hopefully this will work out. So I have two pieces of paper in front of me that I've cut to be a standard five by seven, I think they are. Um, I'm gonna do something a little bit like one of these today. I've been doing these kind of like abstract portraits. I'm using this Canson watercolor paper uh, for no particular reason, except that I had it on hand. I've had this for many years and gradually using up that pad. Since it's made for watercolor, it handles the moisture pretty well, even though acrylics are not as moist as watercolor, obviously. I'm gonna be using these Liquitex Heavy Body Acrylic Paints. Generally, I would use Liquitex Basics. That's what I use for most things for a while, but my friend Julia bought me this lovely set of very fancy paints, and so I've only cracked into these once, um, so I'm super excited to do that again. For brushes, I have these crappy brushes. <laughs> Uh, that I've had forever. I, I, I'm not necessarily the best about washing out my brushes right away, so these are definitely getting a little bit stiff, but I don't mind because it gives, you know, some texture that works well for this style. So let's just jump on in. I'm gonna start with, I think I used this bronze yellow last time. We're definitely feeling the fall vibes right now, so this is kind of like a warm ochre kind of color. Ochre. Ochre. I generally like to just go straight in on whatever I'm working on. I do work on larger canvases sometimes, but if it's a day like today and I haven't painted for a while, I like to work on something smaller so that it doesn't, uh, I can remind myself that I don't suck. What am I doing with this? This is the rest of the page that these two pieces were cut from. I'm gonna keep that right here on hand in case I just want to sort of get some paint off of my brush. That'll be like a little scrap. So I got some paint on there. I'm just gonna sort of take in a general kind of like, bust shape. Um, I've been doing these kind of portraity type things for a couple months. I like them because they don't really have a lot of rules. I can just let the paint move, but they also sort of take on a character and then I can kind of work within that. So for this, I just kind of blocked out something. Let's do the shoulders a little bit more square and a little bit of a thicker neck. So this is a dude. Um, let's just do something kind of head spinning. Great. Um, I'm gonna take a little bit of paint off here and then just go in and soften that. Yeah. So that's where we're gonna start on this one. When working with this same type of structure that I usually do, it's comforting because I sort of know how to start, but I try to give myself a challenge each time. Uh, for these, I was really thinking about this kind of like shoulder friend type situation. Um, this is the first time I used this paint set, so it was all about new colors. For this, I'm thinking about filling more of the page as opposed to having everything be more in the center. I'm gonna try to see what happens if I go a little bit more out toward the edges, um, just kind of expanding. the darkest colors over on this side. That's where I tend to think of the shadow if there was a shadow. So I'm just gonna drop a little bit of that right in here. Not sure what's happening with that there. Just gonna... Oh, it's just a little dried paint. 
We're gonna use the dried paint for texture. So let's just drop that in there. And I have some on my finger, so let's put that in there too. So I guess I don't need brushes anymore. I wanna keep some of the heavy built up texture here, but I also wanna kind of spread out and mix the color together. Um, and also keep some of that spinning kind of texture happening. I don't want to go quite as wide as this yellow. I want to think of that as sort of like a, almost a gradient out into the white. Even though I don't apply makeup, I like to watch a lot of makeup tutorials and people like to talk about your transition shade, right? Thinking of this kind of ochre color as being that transition shade that kind of gets us faded out. Um, but I definitely want some more contrast in here, so let's fill that in. I could be doing this with a brush, but there's something about the kind of dryness of the finger that allows the paint to spread out pretty well. All right, I kind of love how that's looking. I think I'm just gonna drop in a little bit of white here to see if I can't give a little bit more texture and a little bit more contrast. I'm opening up this Liquitex Basics White. I have a, a couple whites here, but the Basics one is open um, and it's massive. I might as well just use that. And I'm actually gonna come in with this other brush, straight white, and just kind of drag that really lightly across the center. I love how I have this bare page just sitting here this whole time. Sometimes I like to work back and forth between two, but I'm really into this one right now, so we're just gonna stick with it. I'm holding the brush all the way at the end here, which allows me to get really, really light pressure. Also something that I learned from makeup tutorials. <laughs> so I'm now, I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna grab a little bit of this red and I'm not gonna put it straight on. Instead, I'm gonna take it over here on my spare sheet and do a similar thing. Oh, that's scary. Or does it look best? Now with this, I'm not really looking for it to blend with any of the other colors. I want that really strong pop of orangey red. Um, letting the colors blend together a bit more, which I just said I wasn't gonna do, but I think that's gonna work. One thing I found as I've been painting over the years, and myself early on, I wanted to keep colors really pure. So everything was super saturated and everything was really like sectioned. Whereas I think that sometimes paintings can look a little bit better if you kind of allow for some of that muddiness so that you get a little bit more depth and the brighter colors can really pop because they have some contrast. You can't see me here, but I'm stepping back to look to see what it needs. I think I'm gonna leave that as it is for now and come back to it. So now that I have this kind of weird combination on this brush, I'm just gonna go in and block in something over here. Right away, I'm getting a feeling that there's a cloud happening here and there's a head emerging from above that. So I think we're gonna go with that. So I'm gonna actually start with some white and just kind of block in a little bit of cloudiness here, keeping it kind of abstract and adding quite a bit of paint so that I get some texture. Something about this feels a little bit like a ball gown as well, which I really love. It's got like a Cinderella sleeve on there. Now let's go in here. That kind of dark blue thing that's happening is nice. So let's start with our phthalo blue again. So go high this time. Oh, 
was so evenly spaced. Let's go in with this purple. I've never tried this color before. Ooh, all right. That's pretty dark. I'm line that in. Ooh, that blue-purple combo is really nice. So what I really love about painting in this style is that I just feel really free. I don't have to worry about it being bright. And if I make a mistake, that just becomes a part of the way that it should look. hitting only the raised parts and not the sunken parts. It's kind of nice. So now that I've taken a step back, I think that this needs some color contrast and this needs just a bit of the red sort of dispersing out a little bit more from the center. Working with a bigger brush helps to make things a bit more random and unplanned. The smaller brush, you can really micromanage everything, whereas this, I'm a little bit reckless with it, but I think it gives more of a, an effortless feel. Two are done. Let's see if my sharpie's working today. Nope. We ran out of space there. All right, y'all. I hope you enjoyed this. I feel very at peace right now. So <laughs> it's definitely what I needed. Um, not sure how it's gonna be to edit this at this point, but hopefully it will be enjoyable for you and calming and relaxing and let me know if you want to see more content like this. I will see you next week with a leather jumpsuit. Bye.